my Savior, I come to Father in heaven, we want to give you glory and honor. We thank you because of who you have been, who you are, and who you will ever be. We want to thank you. We want to bless your name and worship. We thank you because you are more than we can express. You are our God and there is none beside you. Yes, Lord. We want to thank you for everyone that is here. You, the cry of our heart yes, Lord. is we need you. Yes, Father. We want to thank you because there are different areas and facets of life that we need you. Oh, Father. We want to thank you because you are sufficient in all our needs. Uh, we want to thank you because you are also multifaceted to meet each need and every need that is in the house yes, Lord. we are asking you father that you come your way and multiply yourself in us that all the needs in the house are met in the name of jesus Amen. we want to thank you father because we trust you mm. some need you because of healing some need you because of financial crisis some need, need you because of relational crisis some need you because of family crisis some need you because of job opportunities some need you because of marital issues some need you because of direction some need you because of your anointing father we are coming to you to say this morning that you are our sufficiency we trust you that you're going to do that in the lives of everyone that is here today we worship you we exalt your name thank you because the spirit of the lord is here and we receive his presence we receive his grace we receive his understanding we stand that there shall be no confusion in the house exact knowledge is coming to us precision and accuracy is coming to us Amen. understanding is received Amen. we thank you father because we trust you that in everything today will make a difference yes, thank you because of what you are going to do through us the holy spirit thank you, we thank you because we trust you to do this Hallelujah. we pray with thanksgiving in jesus mighty name the church will say Amen. god bless you put your hands together for yourselves and the awv while we take our seats thank you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah we were able to look at certain things wednesday and i am praying that we are all together to be able to see these things come to us we talked about that there are four major social evils that the ecclesia tackled successfully four major social evils there are four major social evils and we are looking at ourselves that if we are the ecclesia then we have to begin to jump or leave from the pews to the city squares it means that is where God's work is taking place it means that's where the gospel of the kingdom is 
it means that is the place of our assignment not the church which are the buildings so i want us to uh, those of you who were not around i wanted to pick up these things because that's what i'm going to be talking about uh, the first major evil was that ecclesia was able to tackle successfully systemic poverty that's number one four major areas of social evil that the ecclesia was able to handle solve bring solution the first is systemic poverty number two is slavery they were able to handle slavery the third one they were able to handle female servitude the oppression of females the early church was able to handle that successfully the early church the first one was able to do successfully was the degradation of the family now all these things are things that each and every one of us is going through and that we don't know how to handle so we came to the point of saying that the ecclesia was both heavenly minded and earthly good now we know very well that today there is um things are going on people are saying what they are saying but we know what god has called us to do so you're going to hear people who say that they are heavenly good and earthly useless and that is that the focus of men and women is going to be that we just want to go to heaven and this has been the singing and this has been the song and this has been everything the church has been now when i say the church i'm talking about the church that was because um we have a different church and you remember i said living church to become ecclesia and i will be moving on that constantly i am beginning to consider and beginning to look into the future and my mind is beginning to have some bleeding because of what is currently going on and what actually has taken place now my questions are maybe i am the one walking around with those things and um, those issues i am looking at you know heaven which is not your place but the garden of eden is your place and it's where all of us are going and the questions i'm asking lately truly truly is it going to be you know nigeria how many millions approximately 200 200 million which obviously is more than that that is just nigeria it's not ghana it's not togo not sri leone not Cote d'Ivoire. just nigeria is it possible for you to actually be spotted out not in this life but in the life to come that god jesus your creator is going to spot you out of people and say well done French for servant. Do you think you ring a bell in God's work? Not just Nigeria is 200 plus million. The, the, the joke, you know, we play. We deeply play. We have turned religion to something. Church is just something. It is not a proper statement to say, K 
keep doing what you are doing for we will soon arrive at reality will he single you out and say enter into the joy of the Lord you are God for the kingdom was created for you before the foundation of the world and will he say you have suffered with me therefore you are going to rule with me it's not about coming here it's not about coming here sometimes I need you to do a self-reflection even if even if just Nigerians are the ones who are going to come there what will be your number what is going to be tied to you are you thinking we are just going to be there floating or that we are going to be there with significant names significant rewards significant assignments or you think it's just something that because we are too many people will not be noticed all the people that have gone ahead of us they have seen it it's you that are still playing everybody who has gone there and memory that leads to regret is real because you do not die leaving memory behind you go with your memory nobody reminds you anything when you are there the tears that are going to be there there are two kinds tears of regret what i could have become And I didn't. And you can't. Then the tears of joy. I thought I was serving you in the smallest way. I didn't know it was a big service. By having to do. Well done. Any other thing I don't know. The vessels of mercy gave us the whole complexion and all of those things that our sister mentioned. You, you, don't, you don't just sit down and look at them. You, you study them. You study them. So you literally study women to know who they are and all that she has been describing is what God built inside of them which we the males we careless why it's because of nothing but deep ignorance of what we are supposed to know and what they are supposed to know so these things I'm trying to put together it is now we are we are dealing with four things and maybe you're surprised why i am coming from this area i want you to understand there is never anything like well done if you have never solved a problem there is nothing like that none of us here is going to be rewarded for constantly coming to church You have obeyed a commandment but that is not a place matthew 24 rings every time and I, I want you to keep reading that until you become part of it ecclesia was never meant to be so heavenly minded as to becoming or become earthly irrelevant and that is where the church is the present religious activities place the church on the path 
of becoming irrelevant. And we are not learning from such part. On the contrary, it is a spiritual entity. Ecclesia is a spiritual entity vested with government governmental justice or jurisdiction on earth to change the world systems for the better i don't know how i'm going to do this by the time you summarize the work of ecclesia it is completely a political movement that never leaves systems the same that the summary of the church which is ecclesia it is a spiritual entity that's why it's connected to heaven but it is also an earthly thing that is why it has to change systems you have to understand where you are now you're not in heaven you are not dead you are alive and the Bible says, if you and me are alive, we are alive for good works. That is the first thing. For good works is the reason why we are alive. It is a spiritual entity that is vested with governmental jurisdiction. It means there is a place where our rulership is supposed to be seen. And it's not geographical. It is a jurisdiction. It is a place where our government authority is to be exerted. When you read the book of Matthew, chapter 5, chapter 6, 7, you're going to find out that it is only in that place that God began to give man the bylaws of the Constitution. They are bylaws. Blessed are this, blessed are that. They are bylaws. And there are 15 bylaws. And you know exactly what bylaws are. If you don't understand, go study. Then he come around and he said, if you are angry with somebody without a cause, he was discussing bylaw. Number one. You have heard it was said, thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you that if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. So killing and murdering are not the same. So how can you be angry without a cause? He said you are liable. The officer. That's what it is. The judge. The Bible said because of that they're going to hand you to the torturer. These things are never going to be found in heaven. They're on earth. We are to ex now. Listen. Anger is the jurisdiction. God wants you to rule over it. And it's not outside you. When you begin to see the kingdom by laws, everything you exercise as authority, it's about your attitude. It's about your actions. It's about what you do and what you say. God wants you to govern. If you don't rule it, it will rule you. And God is saying, I wanted to change the systems. That's why I'm bringing you here. And one of the systems that we are talking about here is systemic poverty. It's a poverty that is in us that has become a system of operating it. 
if you are not getting that systemic poverty it is there in the family which means everybody in the family does not arise and amount to nothing others are making it your family is not making it it is not demonic it is a systemic thing if a family is profoundly lazy if a family is profoundly without education if a family is constantly without ideas without goals without vision without a dream without a passion it's a system it doesn't matter how many children you give birth to they will look like you they grow into a system that does not have set a goal and achieve they grow in a system that look at people go to work while they lie down and stretch their long legs it's a system it is not that no you are actually running a systemic poverty in the family because it will demand one person to rise in the anointing of the gospel to break it so listen to me very well family poverty and lack they are not something you handle coming to church they are something you must handle because it demands a higher spirit to destroy poverty you can hate spirits and love poverty they are the same if all that we have as families everything about us is to consume to consume to consume every salary is eaten every money that comes in is eaten everything we do in this life is destroyed by our consumables we consume it doesn't germinate it doesn't do anything you are dealing with a system and it's not outside of your family it's in your family since you know when we talk about systemic we are talking about the, the root that gives birth to the tree that allows the branches to be and there are no fruit that it is a system every time they get a job is either they're going to be sacked why because of their attitude they're going to be sacked every time they get a job they're going to lose it every time they go to school they're going to be withdrawn every time they there is nothing there is something that consistently is there it doesn't matter your proclivity right now the system is waiting for you to effect it that's why very intelligent people can become beggars and you're wondering that is the thing is the systemic poverty it's in the family and nobody is breaking no you are thinking there is a day that we are going to overrun this there is a day we are going to overcome it it's never going to come it's never going to come if you don't take it right now you are not going to have it you are not it's not all of you that are here it's not that we have not gotten money that we're supposed to invest it's because in the system of your family there's no investment in the system of your family there is no savings in the system of your family let us eat no matter how much they are earning they eat no matter how much is given to them they eat if you can never sow a seed you will train not to it's a system how do you establish a system 
doing the same thing over and over until it becomes easy and then you unconsciously begin to operate it because you don't know you can't break from it it is very very amazing what we are and and your problem did not just touch with you it started from somewhere you are deep into it because you are a victim and you don't know you look a little bit better than your father and your mother and you are rejoicing but that is not because the system is over your life if you are socially okay maybe better than you are or you are wearing some dresses your parents didn't wear and you are living in some places your parents did not or you are you have gone a little bit to school small and then this is where it is the end product is that you are not different they never had you don't have you are not using the creams your parents use but the mindset is the same the mindset is the same they never had a goal you don't have a goal they never achieve anything you don't want to achieve anything they live from farm to mouth from farm to mouth from farm to mouth you live from walk to mouth that is from hand to your mouth that's what we have they refuse every investment they refuse any discussion on to start something and so that's where we are and that's what we've been doing I wanted to understand is to change and I want when I'm talking like this please don't go anywhere don't leave me here and be thinking of somebody else I am telling you get back to your family now as I'm talking and think are we normal in your father's house who was the one supplying bread Who was the one keeping the house together? You're going to find out. To some of you, it was the mother. It was the mother. This is why you are looking at your wife as an evil wife. Because your mother kept the family, so consciously you have a system that you are operating and you want your wife to foot the bill. So you don't do anything then we have the other side of the system that it was the male it was the father that did everything in the house so what happened all children sons and daughters have resigned responsibility to leave it only one person this is why we have leeches in the system one person is working the rest are supervisors consumers and they can kill you for not making a provision you have no respect if you cannot supply anything so how much can one person do to actually eliminate poverty in your family we have tolerated laziness we have toler tolerated irresponsibility we have tolerated it's like they are our children what else can we there's no way you're going to have this and go to a different route it's a path we have taken and this this is why we don't have any we don't have anything It is a system that runs in a family. And we are not seeing it as something that we have to deal with it. We are looking at it and everybody is saying, tomorrow I will be better. Ah, this is, it's never going to be better. How many people are justifying for God's sake where we are? is a systemic thing and i want us to so let us look at it 
very well. In Matthew chapter 6 verses 10, I quote um, a word from there. The Bible said that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of the things that the evangelists have, have, have done successfully and we all know is that we have preached that there is no sorrow in heaven. There is no death when we die. Is that right? There is no hunger when we die. There will be no sickness, disease and infirmity when we die. That is heaven. But how could we talk about things like these and never even thought about the area of poverty? How could we preach so ferociously, so intensely, so passionately about hell and talk about the old things that are mentioned here and we are serious about it. That people should leave what they are doing so that in heaven there should be no sorrow for them. And yet, the number one thing that God through Jesus in his first manifestation, uh, manifesto, the first declaration of his mission statement on earth is that I am here to preach good news to the poor. We don't see that. Sometimes it's maybe because we are so poor that we are so used to eat that we don't think something is wrong with it. So we don't want to talk about it. The will of God in heaven also to be on earth. And the will of God is that there, is, there shall be no poverty. It is the will of God. It is. I bet you it is. We always say we know there is no pain or sorrow in heaven. And we use it to evangelize. We have never ever had any hesitation about extolling valuable and eternal operations or expressions of the will of God on earth. But what about freedom from poverty? How many people have actually preached about freedom from poverty? And one of the things Jesus died for is for that. The Bible says he became poor. He became. There are so many things that Jesus became. So you could. He became poor. Is there anything like freedom from poverty since there is no poverty in heaven? If we are talking about sickness and no sickness in heaven, if we are talking about pain and no pain in heaven, can we also talk about poverty and say because there is no poverty in heaven, we need not to have poverty here. Can it become a subject of discussion? Why don't we address that in our evangelistic endeavors? Poverty was a front and center priority issue for Jesus. He never ever overlooked it. He never. It was a priority and it was a front and center, which means there is no place you're going to find Jesus that is not touching this thing. In his first recorded speech, he boldly declared, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I ask you Wednesday, why was the spirit upon Jesus? Not to demonstrate that he was the son of God, no. But to demonstrate that he is the solution. That he has come to take away, to remove, to deal with things that we are suffering from. Because he has, or he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That looked at the 4 verses 18. 
Now, you have to look at the word gospel and you have to look at the word preach. And sometimes we think that they are all the same, so we don't need to have. Everything you see here has to do with. To preach, what are we preaching? The gospel. What is the gospel? Good news. And the question here is, what is good news to a poor man? What is good news to a sick person? What is good news to a person who is suffering from infirmity? What is good news? Good news has to go directly to the area of your need. You can't read, see a, a, a rich man and say, I have good news for you. He is the news. A healthy man does not need medication. Jesus Christ said that. He said, I have come not for those who are doing fine. When he was mentioning that the spirit of God is upon me because I am anointed to deal with poverty, it means he has the answer to poverty. He has the solution. But you see, we might not like the bylaws that lead to that domain. His message, because we associate them with the ethereal, which is just where we are or somewhere up there. What is he saying? This is what he was. But Jesus was literally announcing good news to the poor. What will represent good news to the poor or to the hungry is food. When you tell a hungry man good news is what? When a man or an, when a family is expecting a baby and they have had years and you have gone to the lab and the technician comes up with the result held at his chest and he said, good news, what are you expecting? Are we crazy not to know that good news to the hungry is food? It's not prayer. It's not evangelism. Good news to the sick person is healing. He is saying, let the will of God in heaven be done on earth. There is a will of God in heaven. And God wants us to do that same will here. So you say, pray it down. And when it comes here, don't push it back. Don't be saying when we die. What is good news to the naked? Clothes. To the homeless, shelter. Good news. So why are we saying that the, the poor in the spirit, all they need is salvation? That that's why they are poor in the spirit. And all of us agree that you can be poor in the spirit, which means you don't know spiritual things, and you can also be poor, tangible on earth. Which means you have nothing. It doesn't even solve any problem that you are saved and you are poor. It aggravates it. It aggravates it. Because when you are poor and you are saved, you come to church, you can't do kingdom work. You can't advance it. The, the, uh, the frustration that I cannot give my money to run the kingdom of God is much more than the devil on your head. I know some of you don't understand what I'm saying. Why are you so angry when they talk about money? It's because you don't have it. You don't have it. So for you to numb yourself, you have to just be angry to oppose why are they talking about money? There are some things they are supposed to talk about. You do not have, so you are hungry. 
that reaction will not solve anything. How many of you have this that um, everything I am, when I am giving offering, this is what our 21st century believers, when they are giving offering, paying tithes, doing seed faith, they believe they are doing each to a person. What a, what a twisted mind. To a person. You are paying tithes, giving offering, sowing seed, doing God's project, and you are angry because you, you think you are doing it to a man. Can never be. It is because that is the tradition and is the systemic thing I'm talking about in your family. Let me tell you this. There are probably 99% of us here who have never seen their family sacrifice for God's kingdom advancement. It is why you cannot sacrifice. It's a systemic thing. You have never learned it. There has never been any person in your family that sacrificed huge something for God's kingdom that make the family go wreck. You have not. So when somebody is doing it, you think he needs advice from you. You are operating a system. It was exactly what happened in the life of David when David came, he married seven wives. Incidentally, one of them was from the house of Saul. Never knew God. Never knew how to sacrifice, dance before the Lord. Completely the system of Saul's spirit in her life by the name of Mitchell. When she saw David dancing, she becomes so nonsated. Why? She wanted David to behave like king. Give authority. Be dignified. You can't naked yourself here. You can't be plodding on blood streets. You are supposed to be on the throne. Let people be giving you air. How dare you just disgrace yourself like a common man. And don't you think that is the same thing? Right in my pastoral work, I've seen women who, when their husbands are serving in the Lord, they are very angry with the pastor and angry with their husbands. You are becoming bomboy in church. You are the errand boy. People become angry. This woman was angry. Peep through the window. I don't know what she would have said if she had appeared publicly. Why was she peeping? She was what? She was a princess. I married the king. I cannot do this thing. I cannot worship like this. She disdained. God never spoke a word. Invisibly just locked the, the womb. David had many sons from different women. Not this one. Let me tell you this. God is selective. And he is very specific. You can be in the same church thinking we are doing the same thing. Others will prosper. You will be passing through fire. So you cannot use what you are going through to judge the church. And the frustration that this woman got is that every woman was giving birth. And she couldn't. Same man. Same man. You think God does not have the power to nip chromosomes and allow spams to be directed? You are joking when it comes to body metabolism. It was. I want us, let's keep this in mind that he is the Messiah. Who came to atone for the sin of man. That's one. In order to eliminate all sin's consequences. And everything that sin produces. Poverty is one of it. I want to say this. If today you think you are not a sinner. And you are not committing sin. Yes. But you are poor. 
you are still having the consequence that sin produces. You have. And until you deal with the consequences, it will be a short testimony for us to hear, produce the fruit of your righteousness. We can't be producing the fruit of our righteousness with poverty. And I'm saying this to all of us for us to listen. It is not a good representation. It is not. It is not. We are to come to a place where we really know that sin has been dealt with, yes. The consequence needs to go. And the consequence is my job to produce it. So in the Lord simply means I have to do something consciously to eradicate poverty. In my life and in my family. Yes. We need to have that. Why will poverty take center? Stage in Jesus' message. Why? Because it was the first tangible social manifestation of the gates of heads on earth after the fall of man. I can tell you, the first thing that happens to Adam and Eve after the fall from the gate of heads is poverty. Read. You will have to go there. And we have time to still go and check those things. When you read Genesis 1 and chapter 2, you're going to find it. The Bible said they became what? Naked. So a man who is naked needs what? Come on, say something. He needs clothes. They became naked. Tangibly. Then they ran to hide. So poor that they have to get leaves to cover themselves. Number two, they become homeless. God came in and said, get out. There's no shelter for you here. Close the door, lock it. Mercilessly, is that? How, how brute can God be? And then he met them outside the garden. And then he said unto Adam, Adam, come here. He said, because of you, the earth is going to produce thorns and thistles. And that is pure production, manifestation, the fruit of poverty. Thorns and thistles. And he said, in case you're going to even have food to eat, your sweat must hit the ground for you to get meager, something small that you're going to eat. You are sweat from the eyebrow. You are going to sweat. I know you're not hearing me. What are you going to do? Say it. You will sweat. For you to eat from today, you will sweat. So you have to exchange sweat for bread. The earth instantly become cursed. Thorns and thistles. What was the first thing from the redemptive work of God? The first thing that Jesus Christ took upon his head was thorns. The first thing that happened in the garden, poverty. The first thing that needs to be redeemed is wealth. If some of you here, you'll be more happier if all the people you're owing, today they, they, they call you and say, forget about that, don't pay me again. Your blood pressure will come down. Some of you that are sitting here, I'm telling you. You will sleep for the first time. Are you not seeing why most of our phones are not on all the time? It's because of that. You change number, they don't know. So you're calling other people with a different number. 
See how that thing has made you become, you are irresponsible. You have become cleverly smart in evil ways. Just for your person not to call you. I will pay, I will pay, I will pay, I will pay until there's crisis. I will pay, I will pay, I will pay until they come with police. I will pay, I will pay. Is it this small thing that you are taking me to police? If it is small, you will need it. have borrowed. You have borrowed. Sometimes I don't know why those who are guilty, they are the ones who are having great ideas of how things are supposed to be solved. I want you to understand this. That first thing that happened, it was tangible. Tangible. Social manifestation of the fall of man was poverty. I know some of you here, because of the systemic way of where you are coming from, you know, we come from different churches. Those of you who are taught that poverty is one of the ways God deals with people. You don't understand what I'm saying. The gates of head produces that. Man begins to suffer. So he now said, if you are going to be reconnecting with me, then you are going to be producing out of thorns and thistles. Is that right now? But the small you are going to produce, you must, if you want to connect to me, you must tithe and produce it as a fruit for worship. When God first created the world, poverty did not exist. You know it. But once sin entered the world, the ground no longer yielded a harvest abundantly and freely. Man will have to actually trade the sweat of his brow for the fruit of the ground. I grew up in a typical village. Oh. When people go to farm, that's when they use scriptures. It's like they are in bare palo. When you, when you hoe and hoe and the hoe slip over the grass because of slippery muddy ground and hit your trunk, your leg, they raise it up, throw it away and they say, Adam. If not because of you, I will not have been suffering here. Very easy. As a visual reminder, I want you to understand this. God introduced these stills and thorns. Anywhere you see them, know that there was a person called Adam and Eve and they fell. And these are the consequence of. So I know, see, I know thorns. I know thistles. I know the thorns that grew up in the bushes of where I grew up while I was taking care of animals. They are long as bristles of a hedgehog, a porcupine. Very long. They are trees. They are not just shrubs. They grow as a tree. When it is time for them to extend those thorns, you can see them sparkling white. We were looking like surgeons. So if our animals, they have ticks in their body, we don't use fingernails to remove them. We use those stones. So you pierce the tick and pull out. Every time I read and I watch those ones and I see where we are, that is. And you mistakenly step on it, it goes so. There were some that while you are pursued by whatever, and you are running without knowing, it will come through right the act foot of your this thing and come on top of this. We have all gone there. We took care of animals without no sleepers. This is a 
and they, they cut those things and wrap them as crown and poke them on his eyebrows. The first blood that Jesus shed was for poverty. The Doroloso Street in Jerusalem. It is the, Hebrew, it's the Greek Hebrew, Doroloso. It's because it carries poverty. Every time, an, uh, every time Adam and his descendants saw a thorn or a thistle, they were painfully reminded that poverty was the result of the sin and that the only way to mitigate was to tread the sweat of their brow for the fruit of the land. When Jesus carried the cross through La Via Dolorosa, the marketplace of Jerusalem, however, he wore a crown of thorns on his brow in the essence. Why? It was a marketplace. And he knew that every people are here because they're going to cheat one another. They're going to do some things that are evil manifested in the marketplace. It is why it's easier to come to church than to become the testimony of God in the marketplace, in your office. You can do terrible things in the office and be in church on Sunday. And Jesus Christ took that thorn, crown of thorns, and went through La Via de Rolasa. It means the blood I am is the gates of hell. And I'm sprinkling my blood right here to bring in nothing but a cleansing to restore people back to. Do you know why you don't like business? It is, it is the reason for why you live like this. Investment, you don't like it. Savings, you don't know. What you like in this life is let there be people helping you. It's a system. Today, I'm telling you, no man, no family will send somebody out because the person is irresponsible. You are considered wicked. The house man made it so worse for us. That even a fool has relations. Who does not know that? His first drop of blood, we are touching the first emblem of poverty. Jesus' promise to the poor was an integral part of the ecclesia, which is the agenda in Jerusalem. This is what he said. When you read Acts chapter 4 verse 34, bless God for that. It was an integral part of the ecclesia. Acts chapter 4 verse 34, the Bible says, for there was not a needy person among them. And I'm wondering, there was not, there was not a needy person in the midst of them. It's church, ecclesia. For there was not. These are people who demonstrated their salvation does not end in what? Cleansing sin, but in dealing with the consequence of sin. There was none among them that had a need. I'm talking about this system that is called systemic poverty. Not even those ranking lowest on the social scale. The widows of the Hellenistic Jews were left in need. You have to see um, Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 6. Later on, we see that caring for the poor was among the central requirements of Paul and Barnabas. The apostles, which Paul and Barnabas were not part of, when Paul and Barnabas came in, the only reason they accepted Barnabas and Paul as apostles is they told them, take care of the poor. And Paul made it so clear. It is not this pray, pray that you are praying that is making people die around you. No. Please, 
you know, when I'm doing things like this, I need you people to start getting books, getting materials about what I'm talking about. So that you don't just think that, okay, it is too much for you to risk your life for me to talk to you because some of you will not understand so many things. So many things. Barnabas and Paul, in order for James, Peter and John, the leaders in the Jerusalem headquarters of the ecclesia, to acknowledge them as fellow apostles. They only ask us. This is Paul saying. They only ask us to remember the poor. Paul reported in Galatians 2 verses 10 the very thing I also was eager to do. They didn't bring cross. I said, we are apostles. Apostle John, Peter, you, you are not wearing what we are wearing. Have this long chain. Have this kind of dress. No. They said there is something that will bring us to know that you are truly apostles. If you remember. If you remember. All of us here. We come here, worship, pray in the spirit, ask for anointing. Everything falls down and jump up. Nobody remembers the poor. Nobody. All these things you are hearing, people are shouting from their loudspeakers. Nobody is remembering anything like this. That's why Jesus has the audacity to say, get away from me. I do not know you, you workers of iniquity. It's very simple. Were they not? They were. They say we have cast demons out, healed the sick, raised the dead, cleaned lepers. Is that right now? That's what we are. You ask, even when they ask you, um, how was your weekend? Ah, our weekend was very, church was a blast. Idiots. Church was a blast. For what? Blast. That is the testimony of the weekend. That's those who are born again. Those who are not born again, they are telling about how their chronicle was crony. We had a party. And this weekend we are also going to go to another zone. What a shame. He proved to Peter, James, and John. He said, this thing you are telling me to remember is on top of my agenda. This is what Paul said in Acts 20, verse 35. In everything, I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. That he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I told us, I said, there are billions of money of churches and denominations and fellowships in the Nigerian banks. Billions that will take care of 200 poor people, 200 million poor people. That when you put the whole church in Nigeria, it can take care of 200 million people, the money they have. And we still have them. Today, all the banks that are established by unbelievers will get money from church. Unbelievers who come in tomorrow get that money and run it for business. Why? Because the systemic poverty system that we run does not allow us to give money to our members to run businesses. No church will say after service, all of you that have good ideas, great ideas, here are some people that are going to sit with you, they will exaggerate your ideas, and they will see the, the, the proficiency of your ideas, how you're going to turn Two naira into four naira. 
prove it to us, we will give you this money to start. Somebody, somewhere, has misled us. In the name of church. Our money, our money, church money, our money, church money, our money, church money. That's what they sing. I want you to understand this. He said, working hard. Now, listen to me very well. How many of you sitting down here, all your family members are associated with working hard? How many of them? Working hard. You, I'm talking about your family. Most are irresponsible. But they will fight you for not putting food on the table. We insult you for being irresponsible. I want you to think the uprooting of the worldwide poverty culminates in Revelation. When you read Revelation, chapter 21, verses 24 to 26. It says there that when that majestic parade of saved nations, it's not just parade of Nigeria. That's why I make this statement early for you in the morning. When nations that are saved are parading before the throne of God that we are talking about, what will be your number? What is it that we have been referring to brings their restored national honor and glory to the new Jerusalem? This continent from Jesus' hometown in Luke chapter 4, I have come and I'm anointed to deal with poverty. To Revelation 21, you are going to see the manifestation of this continent right from Luke chapter 4. That nations, they have stood to say, through him, we never knew poverty. Yusuf Muhammad runs microcreed. He, he has helped thousands of women get out of poverty. Our NGOs, they just eat what people give. It's like Red Cross. Plenty money going in, small money going out. UNICEF, same thing. Why will, why will wicked people handle systems and you think you're going to get the best? By the time you read Luke chapter 4 to Revelation chapter 21 shows that the elimination of systemic poverty which is the consequence of sin and is empowered by the gates of head, was central to the message of both Jesus and the early church. That when we come, the Bible says the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. That we have not seen the culmination of redemption in display of his glory and honor until we line up nation by nation side by side as we take a process of parade to walk before the one who died for us. What are you going to say is your contribution in advancing God's kingdom? While money has become your God and if you are going to give any money you have to think so that you don't run wild. And become insane just for making decision to pay. Am I going to give five nera or ten nera? Can you imagine what is actually making you to hedge church? What is it? If not construction, what else? If there's a church anywhere that doesn't need your money, you will be the first deacon. I'm telling you, you'll be the first deacon. Nobody asks for money, nobody, you'll be the first deacon. And you'll be coming very early. 
Because somebody will be sweeping, somebody will be arranging the seats. It's not you. No. Somebody is sweeping. Somebody is arranging the seat. Somebody, every, once you come, you just sit. And I said, the reason why I love this church, they don't talk about money. Poverty is more than material. That is for Wednesday. Yes. Poverty is more than material. Lucky to be on your feet. Thank you. Let's stand on our feet as we The only way people change their lives when it comes to things like this is that you have to make a decision to become what you have not been all your life. We are going to find out how and why our lives are attached so much to materials and money. Honestly, I cannot explain. I can't explain what money has done to us. That once we see it, we are not normal. I can't explain why. We are going to see that by the time these people, they, I'm just picking that number one, systemic. Please, I just want you to understand this. Are we taking, you know, um, my people, when somebody die, they will say the man has taken the road of the ancient people. It means that is how all of us are going to go. My language, they sang a song, they say that it is our grandparents' road. And that we're going to go through it. Are you, are you seeing what actually has happened to us when it comes to relative way of living better? When are we going to come to that life? I'm not talking about choosing what to eat or because you can't choose. Some of you even you better you know you better even have a choice for a dress than for a food. People, if everybody meets you on the road the way you dress and they say, Let me see the food you ate, they will see the food you ate is opposite the dress you wear. It contradicts. Some people may be thinking that if they offer you the, their food. You will not eat because of the how sophisticated you are outwardly. They don't know that you don't even have it. All we have is body makeup. We are even privileged to make a choice of dress. But for food, now. Nah. One area second to fight is food at home. If you don't want to eat, go anywhere. That's all. It is why we are eating secretly. Because we cannot share it. It's why people in the same family, they hide money in their pocket. Sneak out. By the time they are coming, what is inside their stomach is different from what is at home. You see how you become criminal just because of food? I am, you know, I don't know how you are thinking of what I'm saying. This thing eh, is a problem. 
none of you shall ever look at me as if I'm preaching because I want you to do something in the church. That one is not. You need life. You that are looking at me, eh, you need salvation more than what I'm saying. You know it. You have not taken care of yourself. What are you going to be doing with this building? And are you, have you seen that, okay, it is people like us that they are going to be talking about launching or fundraising? <laughs> huh? When somebody wants to talk about money, that it, it will be our congregation. No, our own is that we want to see why people are different. And we are not. Can we start planting? Carry the hoe, go to the farm of your financial farm and start planting, start sowing seeds. Take care of yourself first before you come to God's kingdom. I'm telling you. It's why you don't like what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to know. Seek you first the kingdom. Be a testimony first, brother. Huh? I beg you. Don't kill me because I'm talking about this. Live well first. It is when you are living very well, you have plenty of money and you are not bringing it to church, then I can fight you. For now, you need salvation. And that's what I'm saying. If we're going to do launching now for leadership, <laughs> what are you going to bring that you are getting angry? Because I talk about money. It's been there now. You think if we have 20 people who are doing God's work and that the consequence of sin has been removed from them, one person will do the stage. You need to see Jamilo, and I'm happy that he is sharing this burden. <laughs> he is calculating that what are we, which one are we going to leave out? And I say, leave everything out. Let's do the convention. What is the Bible saying? For these people who have ears, <laughs> but they will not hear. What is making us not to hear? It's money. When I say we are looking for 20,000 here, are you hearing? <laughs> and then you are saying they are talking about, how many times are you giving? Just 20,000 to cover this thing. You know. So, Jesus is very good. They will have ears to hear, but they will not understand. Eyes to see, not to see. The, he costed, he wanted this, this meeting that we're going to do what, they, what you people did during my birthday. By the time they costed for us to have our own, is one point. One point. Don't do it. So, engineer Gypsum Board is going to tell us one is 13,000. How many do we need to cover this place if he is going to do POP and Gypsum Board? He will tell us. Maybe he will say, ah, let's do it. Are you seeing what I'm saying now? Why are we leaving this door like this? It's because like that. So, this is the building Nebuchadnezzar saw. Some of it is gold, some of it is... <laughs> oh, God. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Be angry. Not for any other person, but for yourself. Be angry that I cannot help. And I'm alive. I'm angry with no, please don't. No, if I see your coma talk coming out like this, eh, because you are fat, then I'm gonna say, Ah, laugh here, as well. Can I check a cow or so? No, bingy, check a cow, no bingy. Ah, I'm gonna come out to carbohydrate for one direction, laugh here, no, eh, chickize, kumbra, no, do sa, bana. Banda wancha. Banda wancha. 
बाग गनी देखे हो आई बेक यू डोंट लुक एट पीपल एंड बी सेइंग आह द ग्लोरी ऑफ द लॉर्ड इज शोइंग ना आई ना जे किचन कदुबा hallelujah so anyhow we are still going to give our offerings and we are going to do the best our father in heaven we want to thank you for the word we know that you are for us you have done things you have become poor that we become rich it was an exchange and we want to thank you you say if we are willing and obedient we will eat the fruit i pray that everyone who has listened to this word will intention intentionally begin to plot their way to freedom from poverty Lord I am asking that the spirit of the Lord will so convince us that we are convicted that we are not doing well grant unto us to change direction so we can have what you want us to I thank you because I know your will in Jesus mighty name we pray in the church say if you have your tights and your seed faith you come forward and i have made it so clear that i expect everybody to sow seed because sowing seed is not for some specials no it is part of the walking towards abundance as in money 